But it, it says it says a lot yeah. about yeah. where you are. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Depending on where you are, mm-hmm. you can you can have it be a great experience yeah. Yeah. Or, or or your the worst experience you have in Correct. business. Yeah. Correct. You know what I'm saying? If you're yeah. dealing with a certain set sect uh sect of people, yeah. mm-hmm. it could be like, hey, uh yeah. you know that yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that a uh, little bit of payment, a little bitty payment that I asked you for yeah. to keep your kid here all summer. Exactly, I need that. Yeah, yeah. I, I had there's, to- there's groups of people you got to chase. Yeah, and there's groups of people that are like, yo, chase, I yeah. need you. Right, yeah. I, exactly. Right. I need you. Right, and this is how this is how I'm gonna show my appreciation for sure. paying you on, on time. time. Yeah, and showing up for you when yeah. you need me to show up. Or I don't have time to I deal with this. I don't have time to deal with it so later. I just, I'm just gonna pay you. Right. But it says that, it, uh, to me, what I'm getting back to my real point is that it says that the people who got money have money for a reason. True. Mm-hmm. That's true. And they're responsible for it. And they're, respo- they're responsible. It, it, this links that responsible <coughs> yeah. part. Mm-hmm. They're responsible with their time and their money. True. Mm-hmm. And you want to be around those type of people. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Level yeah, you got About a couple of podcasts <laughs> before, it's like, why? We were talking about, um, like, the Le- LeBrons and. Uh, yeah. The big people starting their starting own leagues, mm-hmm. leagues and stuff exactly. like that. We we have all this stuff sitting around us, mm-hmm. all these resources that we have, and we haven't tapped into them yeah. mm-hmm. to create it for ourselves. So exactly. I think that's uh, that's what other people and other cultures have done. They tapped into um, the groups around them. They mm-hmm. said, "Oh, my friend, mm-hmm. oh you do this, okay, yeah. cool. Let's um, put this together. We can exactly. we can make it happen." Mm-hmm. And you see that in Jewish communities too, because when I was mm-hmm. talking to uh, one of these guys I used to work with at Allstate, he was telling me that I said, "Why do you guys have everything?" He said, "Because everybody usually will have somebody in that family, mm-hmm. like will be a lawyer or a doctor or whatever. So we keep that's why the money stays within the community. Because right. if you notice, like in the Jewish community, they usually they have everything centered around the temple." Yeah. So what happens is everyone buys the houses around the temple because then you know on certain days Saturdays I think mm-hmm. they only they can't they can't use any any right. mechanical things mm-hmm. so they have to walk there so to make it easier for them to walk they all of course have the temp have their houses around that area mm-hmm. so when they have their houses in the area and I asked him about the whole thing he said well when your cousin's a lawyer and your doc and this person's a, a carpenter and this is person we just use everybody who's in the family right. so the money stays within the community mm-hmm. we don't. Pool. We, we're separate as a community. We don't do things like that. We're kind of like we're segregated in our own areas depending on how we perceive ourselves. Right. And so we don't have a, a place where, and then most times in our community, somebody else is in our community and we're giving our, our funds out to to that community. Right. It's the craziest this, part, yeah. bro. It's like I was watching um, an interview and they were talking about how the the some Jewish communities, when a friend opens something, mm-hmm. And like it's a diner or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Everybody eats at that place for the next month. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Next to make sure that new business, business. stays sustained. up and yeah. stays sustained. Yeah. Oh. Like oh, it'd be like oh, we want to go eat somewhere else. Like no, we have yeah. going to support <laughs> support correct. Um, wow. This part of the community, mm-hmm. we're going to eat here. We're going to we're going to buy here. And this yeah. is where we're going to yeah. put our money into. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense because if we, because see, we have a lot of buying power as as black people. Mm -hmm. We don't pull our black our our buying power to 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 make it or leverage it for our own selves. Mm -hmm. It's always leveraged for somebody else or somebody else who happens to to take what we have or our talent or whatever the case would be, and they'll take that and they'll kind of profit off of our talent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they'll we'll be separated because you have LeBrons and other people who have their own money that they're paid off, and then. The, really, the power structure is really in coming together. When we don't, we don't. We, for some reason, I don't know why, we just haven't, we haven't decided to do that. It doesn't yeah. make any sense to me because it's like it's right in front of you. Like, hey, y'all have all this this power to do something, but there's too much. I think it's it's the the identity. It's just too much self hate. Yeah. So much identity. Because think about it. If you go down the street and you see three or four black people and it's nighttime, your your impression is something's negative going on. Right. So. That if you see four white guys walking down the street, think nothing of it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So your your it's impression how the news projects onto us mm-hmm. that propaganda as how we perceive ourselves and how they projected us to see ourselves right, as well. Right, right. So that's that's the biggest part. And because we we think about what I was talking to Del about this before, 
we're only a certain amount of the population. Right. We're a small part, part of this population. We're not even the largest. Like Caucasians are 60%, then you have Hispanics, and we're like 13% or even less. What? So we're, we're, we're not... Only 13% we, we, of the population. Yeah, we, it looks like we're... See, the, 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 the news and the media make it look like black people and white people are on the same level, like we're both equal in, in population. We just happen to influence more of the population based on the culture that we provide. Mm -hmm. And then, then there's people who, of course, on the other side, appropriate our talents. Mm -hmm. So they make so much more money. So it seems like that is true. we are out there like crazy. That's why you can't, that's what people are like talking about race wars. It's mm -hmm. impossible. We lose because we're not, we don't, we're not even that much more of the population. Yeah. We're not on an equal level. Yeah, I know, as you say that, like you're saying, like other cultures, they take from us and they do. Like, have y'all seen, like, I love my Asian brothers and sisters. Yeah. Because when I see them dancing, yeah. I'm like, what did they learn how to do exactly, that? Exactly. Oh, that, that Korean they take, culture. They take it. That K-pop. That K-pop. That's also that's all black that is, culture. It's it's like when all black did y'all learn how to do all of that? Exactly. They, they they do it and they do it. They do it well. I'm sorry. They do it at a very high level. Though. They. they do I, well. even, that's I why can't I love those. Take them away from them. No, they do, no, they do it well. I, they do it well. They do it well. They take something that we started. They take that seed. Yeah. And they yeah. nurture it and they grow it and they, they and they like embody it. it. They embody it. They, they jump into it. They, but you know the thing about you got to realize this too. Like God made all of us, right? Yeah. So if he if he put it in somebody else, mm -hmm. you can you can you can take it by osmosis. Yeah. If you if you and if you get deep into it, you can get it. And basically, what they did is because that's not part of their culture, mm -hmm. they just took and appropriated something that's new to them mm -hmm. and just made it a part of themselves. Right. And that's all it was. It mm -hmm. came out of us. Now we the only problem for us is we're not getting the 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 leverage or we're not getting the or, or getting the results mm -hmm. or the resources that comes from what we already produce mm -hmm. because what we produce we don't we don't we don't take we take for granted we don't take that of what we produce and we don't try to to um to hold on to it we don't we, there's no honor to it right because it's it comes freely mm -hmm. so we think oh because it comes freely that it, there's no value to it. Mm -hmm. Other people might see the value, but we don't see the value because it's mm -hmm. something natural to us. It's like when sometimes when people do some things that are natural to them, they, it's like it, you know, it's like walking. So right. like, why should you pay me for walking? But guess what? When another person walks and they do like the moonwalk, they get paid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it but it, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's really basically how you perceive it. Yeah. I feel like we we just don't capitalize. Yeah, we don't capitalize. No. On, yeah. We don't capitalize when we. I don't think we're that type of. People. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're not that type it's of people. Not, it's only a couple of us that actually do it and will yeah. embody that, that yeah. spirit of um, of taking something and finding the value in it yeah. to other people mm -hmm. True. and making them pay yeah. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think that all of us have that in us to do it like that. True, yeah. But if you're going to, in, in, in where we stay, where yeah. we live, yeah. you have to capitalize on opportunities. Yeah, mm -hmm. which yeah. is really dope that we're actually talking about the summer camp mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. and True. learning to level <laughs> leveling ourselves up instead of accepting that you yeah. can't send him here mm -hmm. or, or or sending your son or somebody else to uh, a camp somewhere or uh, True. school somewhere cool. that's Correct. so far away. Yeah, you embody it and you make a solution out of it. That's mm -hmm. that's I feel like that's yeah. what we that's we dope. are trying to do here on the. D D leveling up podcast. You know it. You know, <laughs> you know, it, know you know. That's right. All right. That's right. right. Gonna get into it, y'all. We already we already slid into it. We slid into it. We didn't even we, try to go into it. We didn't even try. Try to go into all that so, stuff. Yeah, that's that's because we got such great yeah. guests yes. here today. Exactly. Uh, oh. Could you say who you introduce are? Introduce yourself, please. Okay, okay. Well, I am honored to be a part of this <laughs> duo right now. I am I am Kyla Dennis Wright. Um, I am a a dancer, a teacher, an educator, a wife, a mother. Um, and I'm just here because I want to learn from you guys. I these guys I feel like Daryl and Dirk. I, I, I do like put you guys up here because I feel like you guys got a lot to contribute. 
Oh, and bless you, bless you hard, and like hard. even in our private conversations, mm -hmm. you know, I, I learn a lot from you guys. Like Daryl always tells me, uh, oh, we got to, oh, that's an idea. Write that down. We got to make money <laughs> off of that. Yeah, we yeah. got to do this. Which, we'll, yeah. How can we grow? How can we yeah, get from, yeah. from this from this, this level to, to, uh, to a higher level? Exactly. And then Dirk, Dirk, I have to like come with a pen <laughs> and a pad <laughs> and I got to write, okay, wait, what did you say, Dirk? Okay. Yeah. You know, because you got, you got like a plethora of information is like who is mind blowing <laughs> you know so it's just like i'm just trying to assimilate learn, right yeah because i want to go to a higher level yeah yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm tired yeah, of being. You're tired of being at. at you're tired of talking at, about, about it with it, yeah. other people that just right. want to talk yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. No, no. No. You got to get to that next I'm level. I'm tired of doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and that's it's, it's a new year now. It's a new it's year. It's a new year. You got to get sick and tired of being yeah. sick yeah. and tired. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I, because I'm getting more mature too. Yeah. It's just like I just told myself the other day. Okay, by the time I'm 45, I I need to be like, yeah, done. Yeah. Like I love, and I had to realize too, mm -hmm. also that I love teaching, mm -hmm. and I love educating students, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's holding me back a little bit because mm -hmm. I like being in the school setting, yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. I see so much potential with that, yeah. so many things I can do with that. Mm -hmm. But then I told myself, Kylie, you're gonna have to let that go. Yeah, it's it, only so much they're gonna so let you do. Let you do, right? Yeah, you can you can only be so much of an educational leadership, a leader, sorry, in in education. Like yeah. at a certain point. When I, when I was studying to be a principal, I was, I was finding out that it's not so much about educational leadership, it's mm. about business. Right. So it, it became like, it's not really what I thought it was, which is like, okay, I'm trying to get these children to get from mm -hmm. point A to point B. Mm -hmm. No, we're trying to maintain the school. Right, and then the you, system. You, the system, and you delegate other people to, to, make, you know, the, to let the children go from point A to point yeah. B. Your job is really to try to maintain the whole structure right. moving forward. So yeah. it doesn't it doesn't collapse. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a totally different thing. Like a totally different thing. You yeah. thinking you thinking more of the children and exactly. education aspect. And it's oh, like, yeah. no, this is a business. Exactly. You business. gotta worry about budget. Exactly. You gotta worry about employees. Exactly. You gotta worry about the building. Exactly. You so, got your assistant principals for the children. There, there you go. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> There you go. That's exactly. I was just speaking on my my illustrious principal, Mr. Dewan Gibbs, the other day, and I was just talking about how he has. He's just. He has made himself a master of all things that he has to do in his in his role, mm -hmm. where he knows. But most of it, any most of the conversation that I have is delegating where what money goes with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What delegation. you're going to use this for? Yeah. Because now you okay. You're going to use this for this. This money can only be used for this. Correct. You can only use certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. You got spots here and spots there, and it's it's like. It's like the greatest game at the casino ever I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's a it's like it's like playing a, a game of, of chess mm -hmm. with 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 pieces weighing more than the other. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's yeah. it's, yeah. it's really it's, it gets really complicated, and that's why you pay them. Yeah, what you pay them, you pay them even though they should be paid way, way more, more than, than that, that. That they're running like corporations Correct. as yeah. as a principal. Yeah, right. it's a principle because it's like you always have a million dollar budget. Yeah. So you're gonna you, cause that basically is a, is a corporation. Yeah. You you most most principals have at least a million dollar budget wow. for their school. And you think a million dollars is a lot, but think about it like this. It's, it's not, not a lot if you pay, if think about it, you have two teachers, right? Two teachers, like at the base salary is just forty thousand. Two of them is eighty thousand dollars. Yeah. Think of it, like a million dollars if you split in half is five hundred thousand and five hundred thousand. Yeah. Take eighty thousand out off of that. You 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 and you put 20 teachers. Now you already just got basically just payroll. That's <laughs> right. nothing there you go. operating you just costs. Got no, there's nothing. There's a whole nother budget. There's exactly. a whole nother budget for that. That 500 that you split, yeah. you don't even get the 500 and 500. You, exactly. the, five, the other 500 is for operating costs. Exactly. It's for making sure that the school's paying it. Right. Or making sure that, that or not. you can pay. Or not. <laughs> or not. Or not. You're yeah. making sure that the air conditioning is exactly. running. You're okay. making sure that you're replacing filters. You make it. It is. It gets. It gets I, I never thought mm -hmm. when I planned on starting when I started teaching, mm -hmm. my plan was teach mm -hmm. three or four or five years, mm -hmm. go after that AP spot, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then go straight to. I mm -hmm. just had this. Yeah, like you want straight shot. Straight shot. That I saw yeah. in my head. <laughs> yeah. Then people was like, "Oh, yeah, this lady's been in the uh, AP program for like the last seven years." I'm like what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Why is this so? Yeah. Why is this so difficult to get yeah. into? 
yeah, right. yeah. to yeah. go run errands yeah. for your principal. Yeah, that's that's right. Because that's really what you're doing yeah. all day. Yeah, yeah, that's all you do. You're gonna right. be the you're gonna be the errand boy. You're gonna be the errand, errand boy yeah. for until a time a while. for a while until, until unless you know somebody, yeah. and then unless a school opens up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And so you've got to, you got to, that's why I guess at a certain point, principals have a certain type of air because it takes so much to get yeah. to that position. But then guess what? When you get to that position, it's not all at the, what you think it is. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's and it's a lot of work unless you open up your own school. Yeah. And then you do certain things and basically kind of some of the things we were talking about. Right. So like in essence, what I would like to tell you, mm -hmm. if you're going to get to the point of opening your school, mm -hmm. I would advise like, First of all, of course, you need to get funding for it, mm -hmm. right? Um, you've got to find somebody or a location that's going to be able to give you um, some type of break when it comes down to 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 allowing you to rent the space mm -hmm. for a time period. I mean, you got the church here, yeah. So if you can negotiate with them, I would mm -hmm. do that. When I was doing it, I first started off with school, but I had I had a great principal who. Who, is, who actually let me do it for free mm -hmm. and kind of learn on his dime. Mm -hmm. So I learned on his dime because he wanted to encourage me to get better. Mm -hmm. he, he wanted me to, to get more into administration. So he's like, listen, I'm going to give it to you for free. Whatever you do, if you give me something, you do. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I just want you to get the experience and learn how to do it. So what I did in the beginning, luckily I had a lot of good people who were already, who already were running the school. Right. And even the secretaries that were there, they helped put all the information that I'm going to give you together oh, and wow. it just made my life so much that much more easier. Yeah. I just know how to leverage it now, you know, based on doing it for five years. Mm -hmm. So the best, the, the most important thing, like we, we talked about before is finding location, location, mm -hmm. location, location. So you got to find a location that's going to be a small, low overhead. So you don't have to pay that much money out of pocket. Right. So that's, if you can get that as low as possible, you're going to get maximum income. Okay. Second thing, you definitely have to make sure you get marketing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to get flyers put up like these. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at the time, Groupon was really great okay. because they were, they were marketing for me. Mm -hmm. And they weren't that. Sending yeah, they were sending out information. And they weren't. The only difference with, Mar with Groupon is that with Groupon, whatever it is. So, for instance, if you give me an example, if you're advertising a price, the price has to be 50% of your regular price. So they're going to. So if my price was $100. Right, we'd have to advertise it at at fifty dollars, and then Groupon would take half of that, which we, means you only get twenty five dollars. Right, right. But we had so many. If you look at this, right, we had so much volume. Mm -hmm. So it didn't make any difference to me. Like I then I had my regular price that was not was not shifted on Groupon, and then what I would do is I only market a certain amount of weeks, two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks, mm -hmm. and that's it. You can only pay for that. And then after they 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 did package plans, but Learning in in after doing it after a certain amount of years, I didn't want to do that anymore because I noticed that even though I, depending on which market you're at and depending on which location you're at, in the location I was at at the time, Margate, people were were had had it was much more of a lucrative mm -hmm. uh, or affluent area, so people didn't have a problem paying. Right. So I could do that and it was okay. So when I went to a, a area that wasn't as as lucrative. It was only good to do that for maybe one or two weeks for ninety nine dollars. Mm -hmm. I had to change in plan. So it mm -hmm. depends on where your location is. Is how you want to give out your discounts. So if you want to get them in the door, of course you can get every. It doesn't make any difference whether you're you're, you're affluent or not affluent. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves a deal. Right. So you get them in the door with the deal, and you say, okay, I'm going to give you two weeks for this price. After the two weeks, you have to pay the regular amount. Mm -hmm. But to be honest with you, the best thing is to do is have them pay the whole premium or the whole amount for the whole summer mm -hmm. and that's it no exceptions now the difference is that that people used to like about the camp that i had is i used to let people buy uh camp in blocks so mm -hmm. people were going on on vacation yeah. so they would go and say i'm going to go on vacation between you know august this and this and this or whatever or july or whatever so uh, am i going to have to pay a premium when i want to come back i said no just pay for your weeks and then when you come back, you can pay for the other, the, the difference of the weeks. So the child is only, and people like that because most camps are not going to allow you to do that. Right. But what I learned is the better thing to do was to let people do that, but then make charge them a rate to come back, mm -hmm. to even to pay those weeks because most likely you're not going to be able to do that in any other camp. Right. You're going, they're going to make you pay the whole, the whole amount. Whole thing, and whether you miss whatever, whatever you, you miss is whatever you miss. miss. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I like that because. 
we had ongoing costs. Mm. So if we had somebody come in and they pay for the certain type of weeks, I always had costs for for transportation. So you definitely got to find a transportation company that's going to take your kids on field trips because you always have to have field trips. So mm -hmm. I had field trips every Friday. Right. Every Friday of the week. At the end of the Friday because it's at the end and I collected the money for the field trips on the Monday. Mm -hmm. So and I let people sign up on the list and let people know, okay, you, you have to sign up for the list for for what's called. And the reason I did that, some people like to 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 include the, their in their in their initial um, registration mm -hmm. field trip money for the whole time. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Because you don't know if they're gonna they're gonna come or they're not gonna come. Right. Right. And then you're gonna you're gonna be spending money. The only thing is you're gonna have to track this because once people come in, you say, okay, I got 20 kids coming in here, and these people want to go to to a field trip, if you already had them prepaid, you're going to spend that money before you know it and then you don't have the money for the field trips. Right. So right. do it as you go. As you go. And then, you, then when you go in to call all the, the vendors for the field trips, then you know, okay, I'm only putting in 20 people, I already got this money, mm -hmm. you only need 20, or if some five people drop out, okay, well, we only need 15 now. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to schedule for. And they'll book it. But what you do is, early on, before you get anywhere near the, the, um, the summer camp, you got to plan out all the field trips right. for all for that whole summer. Okay, it means you got to call ahead because most other uh, other summer camps already are doing mm -hmm. that. So when you go there, they're already booked right. in the summer. Right. So you already got to like call them and say, okay, I want it on this date, this date, and this date. Okay. I'm gonna have, and they're gonna say, well, how many people are you gonna have? Well, you you what you're gonna do is you need to find out your average amount of people that you're gonna enroll in the camp. So what you do is before your camp starts. You need to get your registration, your pre-registration done ahead of time so you know how many kids you have to start with. And so now you know this is the amount of kids I have to start with, okay? We have this amount of kids to start with. This is what my projection is going to be based on the kids that I have throughout the summer. So the least amount we're going to have is 30 kids at your location. Mm -hmm. So just just set us up for that, that time. Usually the majority of the time they don't ask you to, to give a down payment until maybe a week uh, mm -hmm. ahead of time, a week before the actual actual trip so you know that's already done and then you also need to schedule like a transportation place to take them on a bus right and then it, as well as every time you have um, and I also have this in here too as well anytime you have any transportation you need to be a waiver of liability that they sign at each time mm -hmm. when you first start the camp there's got to be a waiver of liability for just in general for the kids just right being around. just being yeah, around brother. right right um, you definitely need to make sure that you have uh, insurance there's a good company called K and K Insurance, which mm -hmm. is which is what I use for even martial arts as well as for summer camps. They'll allow you to um, pay for weeks at a time, but majority of times you'll you'll pay for a full balance. They'll probably the down payment would be like about two hundred dollars or whatever. And you tell them in what setting or what um, session they'll tell you. Okay, we want you to pay in this session. They usually want you to pay per child. Okay. They may be like a dollar or five dollars per child, depending per session. So you'll say okay. We're going to be going from August to July 15th or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this, we're going to have this amount of kids in this session. They don't know how many kids are going to have every session, but you know, you, you kind of like, you know, you had to learn how to work, work the system. Mm -hmm. So you pay for that session, that time period. And then they, they ask you whether you're going on field trips. They'll ask you to provide your field trip list. So, you, so they know when you're going out to certain field trips, what the liability is. They'll tell you, well, if you go here and here and here, Depending if it's a pool or depending right. on certain types of places, they'll say well, it's kind of sketchy. We won't cover that portion. So you need to let them know ahead of time what you're going to be doing. And you also have like this other company called Village Youth Services. Mm -hmm. It's a summer program. You need to schedule information with them. I don't know if you want to feed your kids, but feeding children was one of the thing that I had. I gave them breakfast, right. uh, lunch, and also snacks. They have um, a good program, but you have to stay on top of it. If you don't stay on top of it, you could lose it very easily. Um, what about the break spots? You know how they do break spots now? Like for, because I, when I worked at a summer camp one, one year, mm -hmm. the place that I, it was at a church mm -hmm. and <laughs> we were a break spot. So they, they gave us food, mm -hmm. but it was like anybody in the community could come eat it. That's true. Well, so you, you, have, you, can, you have that option. So for instance, I'll give you an example. Most of the time you'll have, when you have one of these programs, um, they give you the option of allowing people to to come to the location mm -hmm. and they'll advertise that you're like one of these spots where right. you can come in. Mm -hmm. But that's usually after the things, if there's there's food that's left over. Because mm -hmm. you want to make sure to have a, and you need a very responsible person only to do that. 
because that's its own job. Okay. I was doing that plus other stuff, and it's its own job. They have a person come in every week or every two weeks mm -hmm. to come and check on 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 your um, on your meal plans. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure your meal plans are specific. So if you have a certain amount of kids for, for this company right here, for that company, Jews? okay, and any company really okay. that does it for you. No, right. um, but that company is a very good company. Um, you know. Uh, to do it and and what they do is you have to remember that they're also going to have an inspector come a uh, food inspector and also mm -hmm. the FDA will come that has outside of of those companies to check and make sure that your bathrooms are clean you have your OSHA which is your mm -hmm. your um your information regarding the hand washing as well for the children and locations to put certain food and where the food is being put at where the garbage at they're supposed to, the garbage is supposed to be located a certain place away from the food is being prepared so yeah. this is more like a federal thing yeah, and you have to. You, and this is the oversight that you have to deal with if you're going to provide food. Mm. Usually, I did because it, it just made it that much more better. It was more right. attractive. Yeah. Parents didn't have to bring any food out of their own pocket, right? You know, no, or, or pay out of their pocket for it. Mm. It was a much more attractive thing. Mm. So I would advise you do it, so that way you know parents that don't have to be concerned about bringing any food, and they love that because you know they're yeah. getting fed. They get fed. Exactly. Watching them. Exactly. There's always a premium when exactly. food's involved. Right. When food's involved. Breakfast, so. especially when <laughs> breakfast. Breakfast. Exactly. Lunch. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. feed them breakfast and lunch. Breakfast oh. and lunch. Come on. Come and on. snack. Come on. And snack. And snack. And snack. And snack. Come on. Exactly. So you know. Come on. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta ask them. Just think about your pantry right now. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's gone. Cause let me tell you, yeah. having these boys at home. Talk about it. Oh, no, no, no. It ain't. It ain't. I'm no sure it ain't, ain't pretty. Having these boys at home. Mm -hmm. Having children at home. Period. Yeah. And food? Oh, no, no. It takes a certain type I of Boys eat a lot. Listen, too. I didn't understand. Not just boys. Yeah. Girls eat too. Girls eat too. Yeah, I'm sure. Let me they, tell I you. Know they do. I, my daughter eats a lot. I didn't understand it when I was growing up with my grandmother and she was watching all of us. Like, yeah. I don't know how she fed all of us. Yeah. Because it was at least three, four, five grandchildren at her house. Wow. Oof. Like, her kitchen, I mean, her kitchen, her refrigerator, her water, her whatever. Oh, my gosh. Tore up all the time. Yeah, of course. You got to say toe up. You got to, you got yeah. to put rules in place. You got to put rules. It, it takes a lot of It's crazy. And then with my boys, yeah. man, like, dude, we just bought this box of chips from Sam's. And, like, y'all tearing it down already. Uh-uh. Like, it's the only thing. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You got to regulate them. You got to regulate them. So now, yeah, I got to regulate. I got to say, okay, listen. That's a regulation If, I don't, if I'm not putting exactly, out, yeah. I want to be those moms where, you know, you set aside the snacks. Okay, this is your bin. That's yeah. your bin. That's your, I'm sorry. No, y'all too big. Yeah, so you get, get you get yeah. one of these today. Right. Yeah, exactly. One of these tomorrow. Right. Yeah. If you right. want that on Wednesday, if you eat two, you don't get the you one don't get tomorrow. The one. Yeah, exactly. It just, yeah. It's just, that's just yeah. what that's it is. Yeah, yeah. We don't have it to be just given out. Yeah. All oh, willy nilly. All willy yeah. nilly. Yeah. You just yeah. can't be going in there grabbing. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's got to last you until not till right. then. Exactly. If it's not for the other people in the house, yourself, because exactly. that's y'all gonna be looking for snacks the next day. Talking about mommy, well, y'all ate them all. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I, think, I, think, I, exactly. I think that's like a generational thing. Yeah, that we yeah. They, they think that stuff just comes just out of, come out of nowhere. nowhere. Yeah, know exactly. It. And it's just supposed to show up on the table. Exactly. And I'm gonna be fed and full, and I can do it again. Exactly. Right. Or or pick what or pick what we eat. Oh, exactly. Oh, no. oh, I don't want to eat that. Exactly. Oh, well, yeah, you're not eating. <laughs> exactly. Now, you're pick not what you eat as a as a grown little boy. Exactly. You picked what you wanted to eat, and it was nothing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. People are like I don't want to seem to be hungry. I say uh -huh. if they choose. Choose. Yeah. Exactly. Like you've been giving them choices all their whole yeah, life. Yeah. You've right. been telling them they can have two, three bags of chips. Mm -hmm. Now when they choose not to eat, yeah. They have chosen. They have chosen. Chosen. Yeah. Not to eat. And you are That's to what eat. I tell Cause they're gonna eat tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. That's what I tell my children. You're not finna fade this is away. What I'm cooking. You're yeah. not finna fade away in the night because you missed tonight. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, I guess Okay, but if you don't want to sustain your life force tonight, <laughs> yeah. That's on you. This is what this, this is what's provided. Yeah. This is what's provided. Yeah, this is what's provided on today. Yeah, my daughter used to tell me that sometimes. I'm like, hey, listen, Yo. you can either eat or you don't eat. I said, this is what you have. If you choose not to eat this, that's not my fault. Right. I shown you what you had the potential. To eat. I never had any choices when it came to eating. It's like, this is what you're eating. We got way too many choices. And that's yeah. it. That's I said, we, why we do we you have talk, a choice? We got to talk about that. We got to talk about. We got to yeah. talk about. That's about another that. show. Yeah, it's a whole another show. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we, we get, show, get back man. on track. Okay, get back on track. So you, so so providing food is good. Yeah, providing food is good. It's it's a, it's a marketing tool. Okay. Um, also, a good marketing tool is professionals. So okay. I didn't have to do any vetting. I was more concerned about the children mm -hmm. than anything else. That's your main concern. Right. So 
with your your with children being your main concern, I had independent contractors that were all Broward County teachers. Mm -hmm. So I already knew they're already vetted. Right. So I don't have to go ahead and do, I mean, I don't background have to go do checks, background checks so, on them because they're already vetted through the system. Right. As long as they're active teachers. Like, if someone was an active teacher and they were like an independent contractor, like I had a teenager who was working through a program mm -hmm. or I had another individual who was outside of, of Broward County, mm -hmm. they would have to go through the system. I would make them go through a... Um, the uh, children's and families, they have like certain types. I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it was a background check for mm -hmm. any person who, who deals with children at, in any type of capacity or has any supervision over children. Because I, I didn't oh, want them dope. to. Yeah, I didn't want any, any type of, you don't want any type of liability. I never had any problems in the whole five years that I was there because all the people were vetted and I was watching everybody like a hawk. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want anything happening to those children. They're like I was just like I, I maintained the business part, but I was always making sure the children were watched, the mm -hmm. instruct the classes were going, the instruction. There was not there was in the in the rooms that I had. There were always open rooms. So the place that I had, I was always making sure the transition. Like I'm, I'm going to show you the schedule. This is a, I don't know if this is my schedule, but I have several different schedules. Mm -hmm. You got to schedule the kids so that that they're always moving. Mm -hmm, They're always mm -hmm. going into from one transition to the other. You don't want any type of downtime whatsoever. Children always have to be like in one from they're going from one class to the next class. Mm -hmm. No no and then from there to, to to PE so they can get some some relaxation, enjoy themselves, go out there and play for a little bit. The place that I had was a really good place, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. It had a building and it had like I think six or seven rooms and it had a big large um um like a, a lunch area mm -hmm. and then on the outside of it was like a basketball court so it would have classes going in in, the, in there and then have other kids going on to do their their um their pe portion mm -hmm. and then other kids will be in and we could divide it at the same time so some other teachers will be instructing like certain things and mm -hmm. i did also have like for my camp i had pretty much i wanted to be a multifaceted camp mm -hmm. we had we had all type of instruments all music um uh, as well as reading and math curriculum. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I did have a, uh, an instructor to do uh, reading math curriculum. I had a guitar teacher, uh, drums, violin, dance instructor. Of course, I taught martial arts there. Then I also had them uh, learn a couple other. Will actually taught in my camp. Oh, okay. Yeah, Will actually that. taught guitar and also um, like uh, what was it called? Those recorder. Little recorder. He taught recorder and and also guitar. Mm -hmm. So we had um, all those things going on all the time. So it was it was good and we and what I did is I placed I placed them by group levels, by mm -hmm. age level. I didn't put uh, large kids with, with um, right. smaller kids. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure all your classes segmented so I'd have maybe like five through seven mm -hmm. in one group, seven through ten or whatever and twelve mm -hmm. ten through twelve mm -hmm. in another group. And so I only and I capped it out about I think about twelve or thirteen. I didn't go okay. past that. So you want to make sure that you want to segment your kids. I mean, uh, I really try to stay away from like really, really, really young kids, mm -hmm. if at all possible. But I did have some kids who were like, I think, between five and six to start off. Okay. But you just have to make sure to, to stay on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, you want you, you to get some questions. How many people did you have in this camp? Like, when you started off, how many people did you have in your camp? Like how many participants? Participants? Yeah. Okay, so we started off... Like when I when I start off with Groupon, like if if you can see this here, this is over a hundred people in the in the mm -hmm. camp. This is but this is the second year. Like in the first year, it probably started off with like thirty kids, okay, going in and out depending. Mm -hmm. But this, if you notice this, this is over like this is probably over fifty people. I don't know how many people this is right now. It's probably like a hundred or so. Mm -hmm. But That's at least thirty. On that. Yeah, it's like thirty on this page, right? So it might be sixty or whatever. But I have more pages, mm -hmm. but. When we started doing it with Groupon, I had so many people coming in mm -hmm. that um, that it was it was I just had to maintain it. But majority of the time, you notice that most people came for four weeks at a time. Right. Then you had some people come six weeks at a time, mm -hmm. and then you had some people come two weeks at a time. Right. Right. So, I mean, I I prefer to segment it where it's just like this. Right. But you you know it's really your choice. I would just do it. I personally would do it for the whole summer. Mm -hmm. Personally, if you can. not Okay. Um, when I first started out, like uh, to answer your question, it was probably mm -hmm. around 30 people, 30 to 40 people, maybe 50, and the most maybe 60 at that time. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but I, I had a very high pricing point mm -hmm. to make sure, and it was only me. I think maybe okay. me, actually, let me see. 
when I first started, I was like maybe about less than five instructors, I think, and mm -hmm. I paid them hourly, like for a certain period of time, okay. and I just paid them directly right then and there. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, and I didn't really, I had a payroll, so I, so I'll give you an example. So this is what I did. So I, this is one of, uh, an example when I started off. I did projections, mm -hmm. and that's what you're gonna need to do. You need to do projections based on, on the individuals that you're gonna have in the camp. So I say, for instance. I gave this person maybe eighty dollars per week, so it'd be one hundred and sixty every two weeks, mm -hmm. and that's basically how it, I would straight it out. And then I would just continue going down the line. The curriculum special, I gave her fifteen dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and then I pay her one twenty every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So that was basically what my my. Um, and then I have support staff, and I put the support staff into only a certain amount of hours, mm -hmm. and I pay them for that certain amount of time. Then I have then I have people who are who are cooks. So I'd have two people for lunch, mm -hmm. one to clean, one to, you know, one to distribute stuff. I'd have to still maintain it. Like, even though I had people cooking in the back and maintaining and also food prep, mm -hmm. I still have to maintain to check. Like these programs, you still have to check off, have a person clicking for every person who eats food. Mm -hmm. So the food can't be wasted. And if you have food that's left over, you got to put it back into the freezer mm -hmm. and take it over for the next day and make sure not to order more than you need. Mm -hmm. You can have like maybe five or so left over, but you want to have a whole bunch. If you have too much left over, they'll start like, you know, citing you and they'll probably shut down your whole program with the camp. Mm -hmm. Now, if they come into the to the place and everyone's not being fed or there's a problem like that, they will, they will cite you. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful when it comes down to making sure you, you order properly mm -hmm. and don't over order. Mm -hmm. But if you do or you, you do have a little bit of leverage so that way the next day you can have stuff that's left over. Usually they'll give you a way more of an order for breakfast than anything else. Lunch you have to lunch a breakfast they'll be a little bit more lenient because they recognize everybody doesn't want to eat breakfast all the time. Right, right. So that's but then you recognize that if I had like twenty different cereals and only certain five eight, you gotta make sure those five eat. The other fifteen you put away for the next day. If it's dry cereal, then it's fine. If anything else you, you can't keep, it's garbage. Or if there's also a snack a snack uh, section where you can use that for snacks for later on mm -hmm. in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And just you can still order the difference of what you need and just cut that out mm -hmm. and use that for snacks. Mm -hmm. And so you have to learn how to leverage mm -hmm. what you do have and and put that into either your snack section because you're still gonna have kids who're gonna be uh, you know left after you know mm -hmm. with their parents picking them up late, so they're gonna be hungry. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to have something to to provide for them. So you gotta use whatever resources you have to kind of pool to move them to other areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me see, I already kind of told you about that, but what you're going to do, so I'll give you an example. You're going to, what you need to do is with all your employees or, or your contractors, you have to do a projection how much you're going to pay them mm -hmm. and how much they're willing to take. Mm -hmm. um, and once you do that projection, you kind of see, okay, this is what my payroll is going to be every week. This is how much money I need to have to operate. Mm -hmm. That's payroll. Now you're going to have uh, miscellaneous expenses. Like even if you do have food that's mm -hmm. coming in, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to buy ice and water. So mm -hmm. you're gonna have to have mm -hmm. buy ice and water, and you might have some miscellaneous stuff that might pop up um, that you need. But you're always gonna have to have water all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to buy cases of water all the time because it gets hot, mm -hmm. and then you need to have ice all the time for many different things to keep things cold. Injuries. Injuries. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. You definitely need to make sure you have a first aid kit on hand. Yeah. Kids, at like all times for them, for them and yeah <laughs> yeah definitely and what else you're gonna need to do is you need to have like a field trip attendance form mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you're gonna need a timesheet this is a timesheet I know these things are a little crumpled up but this is a timesheet for instance for all your employees every employee or independent contractor has mm -hmm. to sign in because mm -hmm. you don't you don't have time to track anybody down right. in terms of their money and then oh we were here exactly. I was here I was last here. Thursday no you, no, you weren't you sign, did you, you sign the book exactly you, you sign the book you sign the book mm -hmm. uh uh if you just, and see this is the thing if they didn't sign timesheet you're not there you're in, right. I'm not you're paying there. you for it mm -hmm. because timesheet and I tell people it's real and they have to sign it at the end of the week <coughs> so at the end of the week you can see it shows you the dates start mm -hmm. time the end time what their hours are if they did any overtime what their name is you already had that situated for them on the the first day of the um, the orientation. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have orientation. Also, by the way, you can have an orientation day. Before you have anything done, you're going to set your orientation day um, maybe a week or two before the summer camp starts. Mm -hmm. So parents know about it. You're going to send orientation packages like months ahead of time 
so parents know what they have to have, mm-hmm. what are all the, 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 the things they need to so, need to have in terms of this. So let me show you this. This is basically, that's not it, hold on. Would this, you rec- I'm sorry, would you recommend orientation day two weeks before camp for both parent, I mean parents and employees? No, you're gonna you're gonna separate those two two. I mean, of course they're gonna be in different. They're not gonna yeah, be you could do, to the same. Yeah, you could do that. You, you could do that within that two those two weeks. Yeah, you okay. could do that within those two weeks. You just it, difference is just gonna make them separate. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my employee handbook. I'm gonna find find one that doesn't have a bunch of writing on it, but I'm just go over. It. So of course you see my name, a uh, summer camp parent handbook. The first one is a, a welcome letter, letting them know about you know, yourself as the director, mm-hmm. going through the information on the day-to-days, um, telling them about the camp. Um, then you're going to have contact information. You're going to have your contact information, where you're located, your email information. Mm-hmm. There's in case there's an emergency, you're going to make sure that information is there um, and where to call and who to contact. Most of the time, I, of course, make sure it's myself because mm-hmm. I want to make sure nothing happened, if anything. Then you're going to explain to the parents the, the, the payment procedure because mm-hmm. payment is everything. I mean, you're not payment, no, no camp, mm-hmm. right? right? So... You tell them, of course, you got a, un, a, a non-refundable registration fee. My fee was forty-five dollars. It's got to be paid at the time of registration. Mm-hmm. They can do their registration ahead of time. So, um, and most all the fees non-refundable. Mm-hmm. So most times you want to put the em, the impetus on people to let them know there's only a certain amount of spots here. Mm-hmm. You want to get in the camp, you need to send your registration fee immediately to, to secure your space. Because at the time, you know, I still get calls now from people like because no one did a camp like that before. You couldn't go to a camp and find all musical instruments Mm-mm. plus dance and right. and food and also and instruction right. as well mm-hmm. and for right. curriculum and math and reading to keep your kids because I wanted the kids to be able to as a teacher I wanted them to, to have fun right but I also wanted them to continue their education yeah at the same time and I, I made sure that the individuals I hired were curriculum specialists mm-hmm. reading and math curriculum specialists a math teacher mm-hmm. and a reading teacher mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so a math teacher and reading teacher would be teaching them on a consistent basis every week to keep that level going. And I think parents like that. They like when you have <laughs> at least math. As I was telling my husband, mm-hmm. they like when you have math and reading available. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't, you yeah. know, they, they have, they're happy for all this other stuff. But when yeah. you also say, oh, we're going to give math and reading, they're like, oh, okay. Oh, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. exactly. You know? Because, you know, the kids get dumbed down during the summertime because they're, they're yeah. their brain is not mm-hmm. really like, you know, their brain activity is not on school, Mm-mm. they don't want right. to think about school, Mm-mm. but you want to have some touch level of something going on where it mm-hmm. keeps that portion of their brain active so they're not stopping what they're doing, you know, right. completely, right. you know? So I did put all their payment procedures, um, and also I also put in here um, uh, pickup rates. So okay. you got to be real strict on pickup rates. Like people don't come pick up your kids, you're going to get charged for that. Right. Because you don't want to be sitting there like six thirty, seven o'clock, waiting on children. You right. just got you got to put an emphasis on that and say, listen, it's going to be a dollar per minute or whatever you want to put, and this is going to be part of your bill. So mm-hmm. and you got to make sure not to be. And this is the thing about business. In business, you cannot be, you cannot be, um, you can't have a bleeding heart. And mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? If you you have a bleeding heart, you're not going to be in business. So you can be like, oh, well, I did it this time. There can be none of that. Right. It's I'm paying employees. Like it's different when you're paying employees. When when it's it, when it's like when you're responsible for other individuals. Right. Right. And paying them, like that person has to stay overtime where they they could have right. been going to get their child or whatever. Going to get yeah. their child. To get their child. You know what I'm saying? Right. They got to stay overtime because you're late. Mm-hmm. No, you charge them because now you got to charge. Now you got to put that amount that you got to charge them back to your employee who had right. to stay overtime because they were late to pick up their child. Right. So you, whatever it is, it is. And don't let it get anything less than that. Mm-hmm. So if, they, if they're if supposed to pay that amount, there's no letting anybody off the hook. Mm-hmm. It's, it, is no it, is. it is what it is. family rates. There's no family rates. There's no friend rates because mm-hmm. they don't, they don't, I don't think people quite understand. Like, they put you in a tight spot. Yeah. And they be like, but we're friends. I say, but they got to go pick up their kids. True. Right. Yeah. And or, or I'm here. Yeah, exactly. I'm here. I got something else to go right. do. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like like we're we're cool and all. Yeah. If we're so cool, pay yeah. me. Pay, pay exactly. Me, pay right. Me. This is what it is. This, this is, is what, what it is. is. And you clarify that when you do your orientation. Mm-hmm. You let people know up front. Listen, this is what it is. And most people they don't want to do that. 
Mm-hmm. At least when you clarify what your what your stance is about that, they're like, oh, I got to pick up my kids. Yeah, that, that picking up late stuff. That mm. people are willing to yeah. do that anytime. Yeah, like. yeah, and and they and if because I've seen it come to the point where where other people have gone, you know, having large large bills left over that they haven't paid because they've been picking their kids late up every time. After a period of time, you need to to separate from those individuals. And say either do this or you can't bring right. your child back to the camp anymore. Right, so you, come back. Yeah. It's like a four day limit yeah. or a four yeah, three exactly. three time limit or something exactly. like yeah. yo if you ain't paid this exactly. all outstanding bill by the third time you left them in right. exactly you, you and because they won't do the school system like that no they won't and oh. I know from first hand <coughs> sending my kids to aftercare yeah well, they don't give a dog on if I'm a teacher they don't no. play they don't care about now, that you're gonna have to come pick <laughs> them up otherwise we're gonna have to start charging you yeah or you don't pay that bill on time. Mm. Them kids kicked out of that aftercare. No, nah, I've I seen people go as far as, oh, if they get left there long enough, a couple of days, <laughs> they, the they call DCF. Yeah, oh. yeah DCF, yeah. yeah. They call the Department of Children's yeah. Families real, yeah. real quick, like, yo. Yeah, yeah they do. Because yeah. it just be too long. Too long, yeah. It's, it's like, not long. like an hour. I'm like, I see kids out there. What? 40, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, mm-hmm. an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or their their school time gets out at 2, mm-hmm. but because the other school gets out at 3, they take advantage of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting yeah. there, for sitting there yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's terrible. It you can be tough. Yeah, yeah. Can I understand tough. the other side of it, I understand too. it, too, yeah. yeah. Like, you got you got a job, you got work. True. Yeah. But at the same time, you're sitting into a public school. Correct. Yeah. That's all these rules. Rules, exactly. You got to you gotta focus on... And see that, and I'll tell you the truth. This also comes into a fact of where that you have the camp located. Mm-hmm. If you have people mm-hmm. who are who are affluent, they're gonna have high expectations at the same time. But your expectations expectations are high, but they're going to follow through majority right. of the time. Yes, so you're sure. not gonna have problems. So where you pick uh, the camp to be at and where you this market is it is very very important mm-hmm. because if you pick it in in a in a, a less affluent place. It's very gonna be very hard for you to maintain and sustain the camp. Yeah, you gotta have people who know how to pay and pay on time. That's why um, when I was at the other camp at this location I was telling you about mm-hmm. in Margate, I had no problem with people yeah. paying. And in in other places, it was a struggle. It was yeah. chasing people. And then after a period of time, I was like, I'm not gonna do that anymore. You gotta pay a credit card or by check, pay it off in full, mm-hmm. because I don't. I, I'm not gonna do it otherwise. I like to attest to that. When I when I worked in Margate mm-hmm. for summer last year, mm-hmm. I was at Margate Elementary, and them parents was like, "I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do too much. This is, I you know, this is summer school." Mm-hmm. No, it's like okay, so I set up a class dojo. They was on it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. I was calling when, them. When are you doing boom, this? Boom, 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 yeah. boom. I'm like, this, this is just summer school. <laughs> they was, and they were there picking up their kids. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You know, even if they couldn't pick up their kids, somebody else was picking up their kids, or their kids. You no, know, it was they had a plan. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. So you're you're right about that, not to say anything about the those lesser areas, but it's just like when we, sometimes when your 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 situation mm-hmm. can impact But it, it says it says a lot yeah. about yeah. where you are. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Depending on where you are, mm-hmm. you can you can have it be a great experience yeah. Yeah. Or, or or your the worst experience you have in Correct. business. Yeah. Correct. You know what I'm saying? If you're yeah. dealing with a certain sect, sect, uh, sect of people, yeah. mm-hmm. it could be like, hey, uh, yeah. you know that, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know that a uh, little bit of payment, a little bitty payment that I asked you for yeah. to keep your kid here all summer. Exactly. I need that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had there's, to... there's groups of people you got to chase. Yeah. And there's groups of people that are like, yo, chase, I yeah. need you. Right. Yeah. I, right. Exactly. I need you. Right. And this is how. This is how I'm gonna show my appreciation for sure. paying you on, on time, time yeah. and showing up for you when yeah. you need me to show up. Or I don't have time to deal with this. I don't have this. time to deal with it so later. I just, I'm just gonna pay you. Right. But it, it says mm. that, it, uh, to me, what I'm getting back to my real point was that it says that the people who got money have money for you. Really. True. Mm-hmm. That's true. And they're responsible for it. And a they're, respo- they're responsible. For it, a it, this links that responsible <laughs> yeah. part. Mm-hmm. They're responsible with their time and their money. Mm-hmm. And you want to be around those type of people. Exactly. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. Gotta yeah. You got because if you don't get around those type of, and that's the big, I'll tell you that primarily location and an area mm-hmm. is going to be the most important thing. You might not yeah. be able to do it in this area. Yeah. Like it would be perfect if you could get it and market it. it so you have to remember, you have to think about a parent, like yeah. when they're trying to get to the location. 
Mm -hmm. the location easy for them to get to? Right. Because majority of times, I would market to certain places that I love to go to your camp. I love what it's attractive and everything, but I, it's too far, or it's, it's too here, or it's there. Yeah. What you call it? I got to pass by this I gotta place pass by to, get, to there. get there, and I don't yeah. feel comfortable. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't like the location. Mm -hmm. Your location has to be really good. Like, you've got to find a location that, that's that's open, accessible, like a school. Like, I always tell you, I think I told you this before, but if you get a vendor's license, there's certain schools you can rent mm -hmm. for like $125 for that whole summer yeah. and rent the school and use that as your summer camp. Yeah. Because some of the, some of the schools don't really have the, the, the funds to, or the time or the, the energy to do that. Right. And so they might, the only difference is they might open up a little bit early because, you know, they're going to get ready to prepare for school in, in, mm -hmm. in the winter. Right. But they will give you an allowance to, at a certain level, to, to use that school facility for, for yeah. summer camp. Mm -hmm. So I, my, my advice, if I was going to start this over again, I would find a school. Because okay. basically, guess what? Now, if you only need to pay 125 for your overhead for three months... Everything is 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 Man. gravy. Yeah, Everything is gravy. Gotta, That's great. Everything is gravy. So you don't you have to talk worry. To people, you gave the hook. They gave you the hookups. <laughs> you ain't got. You see, like, you know what I'm saying? Negotiating. If you can get that, that's ideal. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. My, my my first point would be to, and I'll give you uh, my friend's uh, information yeah. to get the vendor's license. Is get your vendor's license. So then, if you get your vendor's license, and this is what I did too. I had my vendor's license. I was able to advertise in the school system, mm -hmm, Broward County right. School. So then you can put your materials, Broward County Schools. If you know dance teachers, you know whatever you're trying to, to do in terms of whatever uh, genre you're trying to put or apply to, you go to those teachers. I go to music teachers. You go to dance teachers, mm -hmm. or you go to whoever you're going to deal with, and you recruit from there. Mm -hmm. And you say, hey, you're a dance dance instructor. If you're going to have a dance school, I want you to. Um, Recruit the kids you have. You have got classroom of kids. Mm -hmm. Give them all the information. If you get, if you're a vendor, they just put that information under the vendor. You send it out to school. Talk to the principal. See if you can advertise. Um, you might have to talk to the principal. It might be a little bit of mm -hmm. give or take with the principal in order for the principal to allow you to go into the system and and be able to um to advertise because you know the principal doesn't even if you're allowed to go there. Doesn't mean a principal is going to allow you to go into their school. Right. So right. you're going to have to go talk to the principal and say, well, there might be some uh, uh, quid pro quo mm -hmm. going on. You might say, okay, listen, we'll, we might provide a, a certain type of endowment or, you know, or honorarium to the school, we'll purchase some books or we'll do this or whatever in order, would you allow us to use the school for this mm -hmm. purchase or whatever? Or allow me to go in here and advertise. Or we'll advertise the school when we do certain things mm -hmm. on our flyers, we'll put in here. This or this or this. There's got to be some type of. So the best, one of the best things to do is establish relationships with schools, right. principals. Mm -hmm. So the more schools that you have relationships with, the more you'll be able to pull those kids into your summer camp. Because right. that's your resource for summer, for mm -hmm. summer camp is, is schools. Right. You can go out there and, and, um, and advertise and stand outside Publix and put your stuff out there. But you've got a captive audience in the school and you're already right. in the school now. Mm -hmm. You just... Hey, unless they're doing a summer camp, because then you're competing. They don't know. But if, if they're not, if, if, you know what I'm saying? So, so if they're not competing with you, then you say, hey, you talk to the principal and say, hey, um, um, we're doing a summer camp here. I don't know why my foot is hurting. But while we're doing a summer camp here, <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying? I was, guys have been dealing with this weird pain, but you know. Hopefully it's nothing, nothing to it. But anyways, no, nothing to it. So, nothing to it. We're gonna say it right nothing now. Nothing to it. it. Ain't nothing, nothing to, to it. it. <laughs> so, so uh, hopefully um, you'll be able to establish some relationship with some schools. Mm -hmm. Establish them in, in a place that are in affluent areas, mm -hmm. so that way the the parents are already going there. They feel comfortable going into school just with summer camp. Now the whole school will be abandoned, but you'll have it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As long as they trust you and they feel confident that you, you know, you you're going to do what you're going to say you're going to do. Now, right. if, and if you and usually if you're already a teacher in the school system, you know, you already have a little bit of validity. Mm -hmm. So, that helped me when I was doing cuz I was already a teacher. So, people were people were like, you know, people weren't scared and I also had my daughter mm -hmm. in the camp mm -hmm. and I introduced my daughter so people know that you have a child. It's not like I'm just like, you know, your predatory person. You right. don't have any children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they knew that I was an instructor, mm -hmm. and I had 
also other instructors mm -hmm. who are already vetted. So you're not going to put your, I'm not going to put your children around no pedo or what, you know what I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. Your children are in a safe space. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to convince and, and uh, make sure of when you when you're doing your orientation that you're you're bringing your children to me in a safe space my daughter's right here you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so i have a child too just like you have a child mm -hmm. and you have to relate to those individuals but you already have children so you make sure to use your children mm -hmm. as also leverage to show people hey i i do have kids i'm in the system somebody trusts me right i'm a long being so you can trust me too at the same time mm -hmm. and getting back to this payment method so um they had office hours. We had to accept the cash, checks, money orders, credit cards, and debit cards. Um, like I said before, one aspect I think would probably be the best thing is mostly accept uh, credit cards and debit cards. And what I would do, I, I have here, is a uh, financial responsibility form. They can sign that form. Okay. And they can make checks payable. So they know you, you're just making those people responsible for doing that. Mm -hmm. And you can also put them on a reoccurring uh, account like I do have one over here too. Um, this is a waiver. It's in here somewhere. But there's another paper that I have in here that has for the credit card authorization form. Mm -hmm. So every week you charge them. Right. No talking to anybody. No coming here writing checks. I'm here paying cash. Every week charge, 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 charge. Mm -hmm. That's that's going to be your best your best friend. You can do that through Square. Mm -hmm. You can do that through through Cash App or other places, but you know, mostly for me, it's better through Square mm -hmm. because Square will show you all your, your charges yeah. and then you can take that information, uh, your tax information, and of course apply it to your taxes. And if you want to show um, how much um, capital you, you've grown, it'll give you all your charges and you can see it. You can also put in all your clients, their names, their information. You can remarket and retarget those individuals with other things you decide to leverage into something else. Mm -hmm. So even with your summer camp, like I was saying, I would get, once you start getting everything built up, make sure you have all the information to access to the individuals mm -hmm. so that way when you want to leverage into the school portion, you can just shift. That's what I did with the martial arts thing. I just mm -hmm. took all the people that I could pull from that portion and I, I stopped doing the regular summer camp thing. I just start sending out instructors to do certain things and then I just start just doing summer camp for martial arts. Mm -hmm. and I'll take those individuals and I leverage them, push them, prepare them by start advertising. Okay, we're having classes um, in the school year. Excuse me. So I want you guys to start signing up now. Mm -hmm. and so they would sign up and I would just push them over and then I eventually just kept going mm -hmm. to the point where I needed them to keep going with it. So but, there's there's more to this. Oh, there's more there's to this. There's more to this. You yeah. can actually turn all of these... These uh this this Groupon spreadsheet with yeah. everybody with all these names is yeah. like a funnel. Yeah. Now. Mm -hmm. Correct. For you to yeah. use for other businesses that are in between your business. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we just aren't we just aren't trying to like go out the one thing right now. Yeah. We we can use this to capitalize on and use it for later. Correct. Mm -hmm. You want to because this is the thing you want to like for instance like <clears throat> with these people these individuals all these individuals not all of them but some of them I was able to pull to another location the location that. That I had when I had that place was really great. Um, the look, unfortunately, the owners of that location wanted more than I could give them. Mm. They were like really want, and I, and I and this is the thing when you're negotiating with people, always have everything in writing. And they didn't want to put anything in writing, but mm. I already told them ahead of time because I had an accountant do my projections, mm. and I knew exactly how much based on the payroll and based on how much money that I was I had to use as operating costs. I knew how much I could pay them as overhead. Mm -hmm. I said, this is the amount that I can pay you. I know that because I'm projecting them this amount of students to be here. And so I have to have some type of buffer for any type of situation that might come up that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Then I have to have my payroll. Then I have to have my operating costs. Then I have to have my overhead. And with this, this is the basis I can pay you. I can't pay you any more than that. And that's what I'm paying. And I paid them exactly what I said I would. Mm -hmm. And when we got down to the end, that's how much I got because every... Every week I was hoping and praying, making sure this, this payroll would be a certain type of way because I was, I did my projections. I knew and I paid all my people, but you never knew when people were going to be like pulling out know. or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and I would, and, would, and the reason I was able to, to maintain it, it was just God's grace, but I was, I was very vigilant every week. Mm -hmm. I was just, I was just very, I don't even know if I could be like that now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even know how it was like that then. Oh, like I was just like, I was 
watching every penny. Like I watched every penny. I didn't let anything go. And I, and, and then at a certain point I had to let somebody go because they were, they were taking more than the payroll. So I was like, I, and I, I explained this to the individual when they, we first started, I was like, listen, I can't pay you a full-time wage on this. I said, I can pay you to a certain point. If, if the, if, I, the can't can't sustain you. I cannot keep you on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they had a problem with this, like later on. And I was like, I explained this in the beginning to you. Like you have mm-hmm. to be very clear with people. But it was my it was it was my um, thought process to try to help that individual instead mm-hmm. of just thinking about what was was good for the business. Mm-hmm. When it came down to the business, the business was telling me you had to let this person go because right. they're too expensive. Mm-hmm. They're taking almost all the the uh, payroll. And I was like, mm-hmm. once I cut them out, the business could breathe again. Mm-hmm. And so you've got to recognize you can't over, don't overextend yourself on payroll for somebody mm-hmm. who you can't do. It, it is what it is. I can pay you this and that's it. Mm-hmm. And if the camp can't sustain you, I'm going to have to let mm-hmm. you go. Let's go. And, yeah. you know? So if you had mm-hmm. three points to give Kyler right now mm-hmm. on running a summer, <laughs> mm-hmm. what would they be? Okay. Three big variables. Big variables. First, it would be location. Okay. Got that. The second thing <laughs> would location, be location, 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 guys. location, location. It's big. You got to know where you're gonna. You know, got to know where you're gonna be. Second thing would be marketing. Marketing. And the third thing would be projections. 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 So you need to project how Have many vision. Vision. So basically, the biggest thing for me was what I I never knew, and it, it kind of helps me with any type of business is projection. Mm-hmm. I have to know how much I'm going to spend before I get there. Mm-hmm. So I know I have to know how much, um, how many students I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. So I can pay how many instructors I need. Mm-hmm. How much I'm going to pay those instructors every week. Create the schedule around those instructors so it's not taking from the camp. Mm-hmm. So they're only coming in at one section. Mm-hmm. Then also knowing to what to do in case that instructor is not going to be there. Mm-hmm. What to fill what to fill in for that mm-hmm. individual or to move around in the schedule mm-hmm. and how much I'm going to pay for my transportation costs every week for, um, for, their, for their field trips, <clears throat> how much we're going to pay for any miscellaneous things that we need to do. And um, pretty much that's about it. So it's, it's pretty much like, like planning back. Correct. So it's, it's, just, it's almost like a, what do they call re-engineering. Re-engineering. Mm-hmm. So you, you're just going to be make sure you re-engineer everything. So it comes back to you. Like people don't recognize that in movies, they film the the beginning of the movie at the well. They film the end at the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. way, in case the star dies, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying they can go backwards. So they go. So they they film the end at the beginning. Mm. Which is weird, right? Yeah. And I still am not done yet. So. And okay. So Kyle. Yes. <laughs> Where do you see, I haven't seen a name for this this camp yet, but the vision of the camp, where do you see this camp in five years? No, no, let's go, let's get get serious about the camp. Okay. Where do you see Kyla Denise Wright? Did I say it right? Kyla Dennis Wright. Kyla Dennis Dennis Wright. Wright. Dennis Wright. Okay, let me back it up. Where do you see (laughs) Kyla Wright at the end of five years? Oh, at the end of five years. In five years. Let's not even go in. Okay, five, in, in five years. Starting. We'll just start. I hopefully see this summer camp already like working like clockwork. Mm-hmm. Already like, it's like, so like people look forward to coming to this summer camp. You know, Are they you profitable? Think, <laughs> yes. Okay. Very profitable. Very established, distinguished type of camp. Like, okay, like this is where you, this is the camp to go to if you have this child in a, in this creative space. If they're a singer, if they're an actor, if they're a musician, if they produce music, if they're an artist of any type, anything that does you know kinesthetic type things. This is the place to go. If you want your child's skills to grow in those areas, this is the place to go. That's where I see the camp. And then people begging for us to have a school. Mm. Mm. To further their education. It's not just a summer thing, 
but this is something I can my, my child can look forward to and they can grow. Like I said, I'm looking for this in my for my own children. Because now I have to find programs after school, you know, to put them in and different things like that. So I want this to be something that's a very distinguished, prestigious type place that people are wanting to go to. Parents are wanting to put their children in. The children are wanting to be a part. And very profitable. Very profitable. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know the school. God, man, I can't forget, remember this man's school in Atlanta. He's a, he's a Caucasian guy. And, like, the, the employees look like they, are, they love working there. The kids of all backgrounds look like they're happy to be there. They celebrate every achievement. Their school mm. is, like, I want to go to the school. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You know, it, it, you know the, just the atmosphere of the school is just enjoyable. Mm. Their classrooms are enjoyable. The theater is enjoyable. The hallway is enjoyable. We need that because the kids don't have no motivation. Wow. Like, I ask kids, my students all the time sometimes, like, why are you not doing your work? I'm not motivated. Who, mm. What? Mm. They don't want to do it. They're not, they're not, they don't have that unction to, to... That, that light's been sucked right. out of them as soon as they open their phone in the morning. Right. Yeah, 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 that, that, that blue it's light. It's gone. Yeah. yeah and, I, and, I, and, like, my, like my own children, they, like... <laughs> James, like I would never thought he wants to cook. Every time I'm in the kitchen, he wants to be there with me cooking. Can oh, I just wow. can I just sit here and see what you're doing? That's cool. Can I make this meal? Yeah. Can I do this? Might want to be a chef. That's what I told him. That's you nice. know, besides a producer, he might want to be a chef. Have that skill. And I know somebody who knows how to cook. Yeah. I know a culinary. Yeah. I call them culinary yeah. artists. I know a culinary, yeah, a culinary artist. artist. I know culinary somebody artist. that knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. I know several people that that can teach children to do that. Yeah. There's schools like that. There's a place called Little Chefs. Like yeah. All, yeah, and they actually teach teach children like how to be a chef. So this is the kind of stuff that I want. So I see this camp blossoming and growing, and it's like something that's well-known, like I said, distinguished, established, profitable. Um, you know, everybody enjoys coming. Everybody wants to be a part. That's why I see it, and that's why I want people that I know to be a part of it. Because I know the people that I know, I know are good people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, I'm not asking them to do something that's out of their reach. Mm -hmm. I'm asking them to do stuff that they love to do and just to teach the younger generation to do it. Because, man, let me tell you something. I don't know where our world's going to be, yeah. but I, I want to be a part of it, making it a better place. Mm -hmm. And then giving these kids skills and tools that they can use and they love using and they can share with others. It's just, I'm, going, I'm about to get emotional. Ooh. I, I'm just seeing that as you ask that there question, it is. You leveled I'm, up real quick. I'm like thinking of it. You know what I'm saying? You leveled up real quick. So this is why I'm coming to you Let's guys, go. trying to learn and saying, "Hey, you want to be a part?" I mean, all that Dirk just told me. Why wouldn't I want Dirk to be a part? Dirk has Dirk has the information now. Dirk has like, now now the information had to come by trial and error and error and payment. Now there uh, <laughs> pay for it, there right? are people who. Who willing to do it? That were willing to do it. Right. They went through the fire, Man. and it's like um, I don't want to get burnt again. Uh, yes. Or if I get burnt, I get burnt while being paid. Exactly. So being paid big time. <laughs> big time. And then that's what I want for us. I want us to get paid for things we love to do. Yeah, mm. yeah that's nice. You know, that's, instead that's, of just coming nice. coming to a place where it's like, okay, I gotta get a paycheck. I gotta get paid. I gotta get this insurance. Yeah. I gotta get this these health yeah. benefits. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's what I'm here for. Ooh, yeah, yeah. But man, if you would get paid a lot of money mm. for something that you love to do, yeah, that'd be amazing. Understand? And you want to share? Yeah, yeah, want to share. Man, come on. I think it I think it's I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. Daryl, you told me that? It is. It is possible. But my favorite thing is always my, my lesson that I've been learning lately is that you do what you have to do so you can do what you want. To do. Yeah. And that and that's why we're doing what we have to do. That's what we're doing. We have to we come we come humbly to to the D and D podcast, asking our our uh, one of our co-hosts, uh, Dirk, mm -hmm. for his experience right. in this situation, and I believe that it's going great. We've got some great tips, we've got some yes. great pointers, Definitely. and we're going to continue to go on with this information. But right now, we're going to 
I'm tell like, you guys, you know what I'm saying? Give, make, make copies. Yeah, I, might, I, find, I, I might need some of this stuff back because I was like, I don't know if I needed an application back. Y'all, you he giving me all his stuff, y'all. Give me, give me all, I'm getting all, all the, the nuggets. All the gems. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking at us. I think I, 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 I gave you two, two, two uh, uh, employee applications. I might have to take this one back. For 30, I mean, 40 straight <laughs> minutes, he's giving us all the gems all to the gyms. summer camp. Man. And... And one more time for the D and D leveling up podcast. And if you don't know, now you know. Understand? <laughs> it has been great. Yes. Here with here with Kyla. Yes. Right. And my co-host Dirk. You already know. DWT. You know it's in house. You understand? All right. All right. All right. That's right. We're gonna catch you guys later. Peace. Peace. Bye, guys. Peace. <laughs> Oh, I was tight.